Welcome back, everybody, for my portfolio update for February 2024. And after a lot of changes in January, I said that it would probably quiet down over the next few months. Well, at least for one month, that turned out to be wrong. But the good news is you've heard about all the major changes already. I talked about trimming United Health in last month's portfolio video, and I sold out of my Hershey position, which I talked about at length in a video earlier this month. Plus, I broke down my thought process of adding Google and MSCI to my portfolio just a couple weeks ago. But the market in February was a pretty wild ride, with companies like NVIDIA and Meta absolutely crushing and being up over 20% in a month, and other big names that are actually in my portfolio continuing to struggle. So how did my portfolio actually perform this month? I will say it's going to seem like a lot of bad news and maybe taking a couple steps back, but there are some really positive things, I think, to be excited about. So enough of the overview. Let's get into the details. As of March 1st, my account is currently at $264,890.31, and in the last one month, my portfolio balance is up over $4,200. So if we adjust this to see how we did for February only, we see that my beginning value was $258,047 and some change. I made $800 in net contributions, and in terms of my overall investment change, it was $5,908, which was mostly investment gains of $5,704 with another $204 of dividend income and account interest. So in terms of investment gains and even dividend income, both were improvements over what happened in January. But let's actually see how we did against the S&P 500. As you can see, for the month, the S&P 500 was up 5.34%, accounting for the timing of my contributions. And that's a really good month. And my portfolio was up only 2.28%. So we trailed the index by just over 3% in February. And that definitely hurts. It's just never fun when that happens. And now if we take a quick look at year-to-date performance for 2024, the S&P 500 is up over 7% at 7.11%. And my portfolio is at 3.5%. And just for consistency, let's take a look at the performance of my portfolio since I started it on December 8th, 2022. We see that my portfolio was up 16.78% compared to the S&P 500's 25.46%. So my portfolio continued to lose ground to the index, at least for February, and it's not really a big mystery as to why. And I'll explain all that here in a minute. But first, if we take a look at my investment income, specifically for the next 12 months, we see that my annual dividends and interest are at $3,990.80, compared to the $4,920.22 that I had last month, which is a brutal $929 decrease from a month ago. Now, on the surface, this looks scary, but it's really to be expected with the changes that I've made this year. In theory, we would have seen this drop last month, but it was delayed because I was parking cash in ESCA, which is the Treasury Bill ETF. And that ETF is currently paying over 5% in distributions. But now that those funds were used to buy Amazon, Google, and MSCI, plus I've sold positions in higher dividend pairs like Hershey and SCHD, it makes sense that my dividend payouts would decrease by a lot. Now, in terms of dividend yield, overall, my portfolio yield has now dropped to 1.5%. Now, it's normally closer to 2 but with the changes, it makes sense that it's going to be a little bit lower. And at the end of the day, it's more about overall return for the portfolio and dividend growth than it is current yield, which we've talked about many times. But let's actually take a look at what dividends hit my account for the month of February. On February 9th, I received $60 from American Express to four different accounts. On February 15th, I received $36 from Apple in three different accounts. On February 20th, I received $50.70 from Caterpillar in two different accounts. And then lastly, on February 23rd, I received $57 from Starbucks in four different accounts. So overall, I had a total of $203.70 in dividend income for the month, which is definitely better than January, but as we expect, My dividend income has reduced overall quite a bit with the portfolio changes, so it's going to be lower just going forward in general. But now, let's take a look at what stocks I bought and sold for the month. On February 1st, I sold 25 shares of United Health at $505.30 a share, which we technically already talked about this in last month's video, but I'm including it again because it did technically happen in February. On February 6th, I bought an additional 50 shares of Amazon at $167.96 a share. 
On February 13th, I sold my full position in Hershey, which was 75 shares, at a price of $196.46. On February 15th, I bought 100 shares of Google at $141.70 a share, as well as 9 shares of MSCI at $576.49 a share. And then lastly, on February 21st, I bought an additional 4 shares of Amazon at $168.46 a share. Now, obviously, the Hershey sale was a little bit unexpected this month, so I had to kind of adjust expectations and let everybody know, but I do feel good about that decision. And adding Google and MSCI to my portfolio were right in line with me wanting to look for new opportunities that have better prospects for long-term growth. And I already broke all those down in detail in videos this month, so hopefully you had a chance to see those already. Now, if we take a look at my updated portfolio allocation and weightings, McDonald's is still in the top spot at a little under 14%. Visa is next at 12.8%, Valero's third at 10.68%, and Amazon is new in the top four at 10.28%, partially because I added more to that position and partially because it's been performing really well. Apple is fifth at 10.24%, United Health Group is a little under 10%, and American Express just keeps on rising and is now over 8%. We have Google, which is new this month, and they're at over 5%. Caterpillar just keeps crushing it, making me wish that I'd bought more, but it's just under 5%. Starbucks is at just about 3.6%, and MSCI, also new this month, is just getting started at a little under 2%. So again, a few changes this month in hopes of giving my portfolio a better chance to kind of match up with the market return. And now if we take a look at which holdings have performed the best overall, and remember, this is just price return since I take my dividends in cash and reinvest manually, but... American Express is still crushing it at over 44% gain. Caterpillar is again second, but still growing with over 35% since I added it back in November. Valero at just over 22%. Visa is up over 15% and continuing to do well. Amazon is less than two months old in my portfolio and already close to 12%. McDonald's is a little over 8%. United Health is over 7%, but has really come down from where it was last year. Starbucks has been treading water for what feels like forever, and it's at just over 1%. And then my three negative positions start off with MSCI and Google, which are actually new positions this month. And it's always fun when you buy something new and it drops, but it's more fun when you buy two new things and they both drop. Fun. And then Apple, which has taken a nice dip to start 2024 and is now firmly back in the red. If we just take a look at the last month by itself, you can see that as of March 1st, Caterpillar continues its amazing run at over 10% over the past month. Amazon has been great at over 9%, as well as Amex continuing to crush it at over 9% as well. We had Visa that was over 3%, Valero over 2%, MSCI and Starbucks over 1%, although I just recently bought MSCI, so that was mostly before I bought it. SEHD was slightly positive for the month, and then for my negative holdings, you have McDonald's, United Health, Apple, and Google. Now, Google being down almost 10% was mostly before I bought. It's down about 2-3% to since I bought it. But the other three are the big reason why my portfolio underperformed the market over the past month, combined with the fact that I don't have any exposure to NVIDIA or Meta. McDonald's is my biggest holding and basically stayed flat. Apple is a large holding and had a terrible month. And United Health continues to drive me crazy as more annoying news comes out, like a system hack that's impacting medical claims, as well as a DOJ investigation. But just like I talked about in my video, I won't overreact to news like this. I'll wait to see how their fundamentals look in their next quarterly update, and we'll go from there. All right, so as promised, let's get an update on my top four for 2024 stocks and see how they've been doing. And if we take a quick look, we can see that for the second month in a row, the three that I'm still actually invested in are doing very well. Caterpillar, Valero, and Visa have all pretty handily outpaced the S&P so far this year, which is really nice to see. Now, Hershey has fallen back quite a bit from last month, but hopefully you guys saw my Hershey video about the concerns I had after their earnings call and why I sold my position. And that video was on February 12th of this year. Now, if we look at Hershey's performance versus the S&P 500 before and after that, we see that before it was actually pretty close, but since it's underperformed by quite a bit. Now, again, this has just been a couple weeks, so it doesn't necessarily mean a lot just in terms of price action, but it is something that I think is going to continue to underperform, and that's really one of the big reasons why I got out of it. And if you remember, I was talking about the uncertainty with cocoa prices as one of the reasons. 
And at that time, cocoa prices were already at all-time highs that hadn't been seen in over 50 years. And in the last two weeks since, it's already risen another 18%. I mean, that is not a pretty chart. Now, obviously, two months is just two months. It doesn't necessarily mean a lot, but it is nice to see that a few of the things that I expected are starting to play out at least a little bit. So let's take a look ahead to next month and what holdings I think I'm going to add to going forward. The ones that I'd like to be higher in terms of weight, I'd like MSCI to be higher than 2%, and I'd still like to add to Caterpillar, but at this rate, it'll probably never get there because it just keeps going up without fail. In terms of the ones I think are the best value right now, believe it or not, I would say the three big tech firms in my portfolio, Amazon, Google, and Apple, as well as probably Starbucks. Because when I look at the projected cash flows for those three big tech firms, I mean, the amounts are just huge. And even though the market continues to say that they're overvalued, I just don't see the same thing in the fundamentals. Now, in terms of what I expect over the next month, here's kind of what I'm thinking. I do finally expect it to quiet down a little bit more and likely just me adding small amounts to my current holdings. I haven't added to my Apple position yet in 2024, even though it's been coming down in price, but this might actually be the month that I do that. And then now that we're done with earnings season, I'm not anticipating any additional trimming or selling like I've been doing for the past two months. So it's definitely been a more active than normal first two months of 2024, at least for me. But it's really about me staying true to a major part of my portfolio goal, which is to beat the S&P 500 in total return. And like we do every month, let's actually review my portfolio goal and strategy. My goal is to beat the S&P 500 in total return while creating a growing passive income stream for my family. My strategy to achieve it, I want to attach myself to companies with wide moats that are generating increasing cash flow and rewarding shareholders with dividend growth that outpaces inflation. So if I recap what happened this month, my portfolio went up a good amount, but I lagged the S&P 500 by over 3%. A couple of my large positions had poorer months, and I didn't have any exposure to big winners like NVIDIA and Meta. My annual dividends decreased by a lot, but it was expected with the changes that I made earlier in the year. And the remaining three of my top four picks for 2024 are still performing strong and beating the market. Now, unfortunately, I had to exit my Hershey position and the rest of my portfolio, including some of my larger holdings, are still struggling a bit. So overall in my portfolio, it's been a mix of what I would consider home runs like Caterpillar and American Express, along with some stocks that have been disappointments, at least so far like Apple. But we've talked about this before. In some ways, these can be some of the hardest months because being up over 2% in a month is really good. But then mixing that with the fact that you're down 3% from the index just kind of makes it demoralizing. And this is why we say that picking individual stocks is so hard. Now, if you remember the meta example that I've used in other videos, after four years, you would have been down over 40% on your investment, wondering if you got it wrong. But then 18 months later, your investment was up over 3x. Now, obviously, not every stock or portfolio is going to move that way. That's an extreme example. But the point is that you can be in a situation where you can be wrong for months or even years at a time and underperform the market for months or even years. And then it changes because the companies that you've stacked up start to see their potential realized. So while it sucks to be lagging the market by 3.5% year to date already, and it sucks to be lagging the market 8.5% since inception, I'm still making pretty good returns. It's not like I'm down 40%, you know, in the negative yet, hopefully never. But then again, I'm only 14 months into tracking this portfolio. So only time will tell. And many times when these things happen, they happen in quick spurts that are hard to predict. But I did think at the end of 2023 that my portfolio had too many companies that were slow growers that made it really hard to even give me a shot to beat the market. So I've transitioned that a bit in the first two months of 2024 with the removal of Walmart, Hershey, and half of my SCHD position while adding Amazon, Google, and MSCI. And I know a lot of folks think that it was a year too late, but that's just not what I see in their fundamentals. To me, they still look strong compared to the alternatives that are out there. So we'll just keep plugging along and see how it goes. So how did you guys end up for February? The market was up a lot, so hopefully you saw a lot of green as well. Now, if you want to get more details on why I added Google and MSCI to my portfolio, click on this video right here. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Financial independence is true freedom. So keep building and stacking wins. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.